Cause we are sisters, we stand together We make up one big family, though we don't look the same Our spots are different, different colors <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about The Cheetah Girls. The Cheetah Girls is a 2003 Disney Channel original movie. It's directed by Oz Scott, cinematography by Derek V. Underschultz, editing by Deborah Light and Terry Stokes, music by John Van Tongeren, and it's written by Allison Taylor. It is based off the book series, and by book series I mean like a lot of books, by Deborah Gregory. The film stars Raven Simone as Galleria, Adrian Houghton, Houghton, Houghton as Chanel, Kylie Williams as Aqua and Sabrina Bryan as Dorinda. So believe it or not, which I don't, um, this is the first Disney Channel original movie musical. I did not believe that. And then when actually looking at it, the only musicals we've watched have really been like ABC television releases or potential like actual theatrical releases. There has not been, I don't believe like an official DCOM musical until this, which is crazy. I could have sworn we were watching musicals already, but I guess, I mean, like we have been, but just not decom musicals. So that's insane. Um, if you know the book series, there's a character named Anne Jeanette uh, that they ended up dropping for the film. Uh, she's supposed to be twin sisters with Aqua. So Aqua is supposed to be a twin sister with Anne Jeanette and they're supposed to be like a little duo. Um, and they could not find like a pair of twin sisters to play Aqua and Anne Jeanette. They were having too much difficulty. They thought about doing Tia and Tamara Maori because they were big Disney people at the time. Um, but they thought they were too sophisticated to play Aqua and Anjanette, so they, they decided to just drop Anjanette and just have Aqua. And, um, they originally went with Solange Knowles, if you can believe that, but then ultimately ended up with Kylie Williams. The movement in this is stellar. They followed the girls all around New York City, if it's New York City. They also did great in, like, a lot of just moving in some some scenes but then the like music video montage scenes versus like the actual story scenes the juxtaposition between those was so good because the music scenes true like the song scenes really felt like music videos and fun like moments for them and then the like scenes where it's actually just like a story playing out felt much more like you were just like watching their lives play out and i really loved that they were able to accomplish that with the cinematography the music video edits are the best part of this movie because it, they are so on, like, on the point of how music videos were back in the early 2000s. Uh, just the inspo for some of these, like, music video moments were so good. And each edit for each song, like, went with the vibe of the song. They just did such a great job with it. I'm obsessed. Um... And then like the movie itself does fly, so the edit during the story sequences is also really well done, but the, the music video edits are what shine for sure. <laughs> Obviously, straight bops. Together We Can, Girl Power, Cinderella, Cheetah Sisters, like come on, they're all bops. Hot take, come on is not a bop. I tolerated it much better this time, but growing up, any time the scene came on where it was time for him to do like, come on, come on. I was like, turn it off. Like, I don't need to see the end, but I wanted to see Cheetah Sisters. So I stayed, but I just hated it. So like, because I didn't like that song, I didn't like him. I have changed my mind on that. We'll get there. But this like, we go all around the world. That song they wanted to do with like the pandas and the whatever. Um, is garbage, 100%, so I'm glad their songs were better than that, <laughs> because what if, like, I had liked that song better? That would have been so funny. Uh, but yeah, straight bops, otherwise. The setup in the beginning is a little expository, but is so fun. I love getting right into it with the girls, like, right after their performance. They're walking, they're, well, they're eating, and then they're walking downtown, and it is just, like, you're right into it with them right away. There's no like slow getting up into it. it I just loved that. Galleria and Chanel's um, parents, I should say Chanel's mom and Galleria's parents are so like lovely and uh, teaching them, you know, good things. I will say I was upset with Galleria's mom wanting to like not let her have a chance at success 
just because she wants her to go to college, that's a little icky. However, I absolutely agree that the mom should have been at every single meeting. They are minors, and she absolutely should have had a lawyer look over the paperwork. So I was, I was like, on Galleria's side for the fact that like she absolutely should be able to take the opportunity of becoming a recording artist, but also on the parent side of being like, well, if you're gonna become a recording artist, we're gonna, like, we're gonna be there, you're a minor, and also we need a lawyer to look at the papers. Like, we're not idiots. Like, that's just good business decisions. <laughs> like, 100%. The movie really is out here trying to make us feel so bad for Galleria when she is terrible, dude. She is such a turd blossom for, like, majority of the movie. And she only verbally apologizes to, like, the woman running the talent show, the art teacher. She does not verbally apologize to her cheetah sisters, okay? They all just kind of are like, no, okay, we know, like, we love you and we know you're sorry or whatever else. Like, it's, and, like, when they decide, like, they might want to think about it and might want to go with Jack, well, she has that whole doomsday, like, I am right, right? Like, whatever, and she doesn't realize that it's her actions that led to that entire situation where like if they had all just talked they probably all would have been like yeah no actually and i'm like galleria like she doesn't even like she doesn't have a full character growth moment she like admits that she gets a little out of hand and then she apologizes to the art teacher never to aqua doe and chanel and that made me so mad the last thing with the writing I love that they all come flocking for Toto. I think it's very sweet. I love the whole, like, them all cheering, waiting for Toto to get out of the hole. However, this is the most random plot point they could have come up with to bring these girls back together. A million other things. Galleria deciding to apologize to them would have been reason enough. Um, but no, no, it had to be, like, Toto is in trouble in a, like, Toto fell in the well. Okay, like, he fell in the well. Uh, not a real well, but a hole in the street, nonetheless. Um, and that brought them all together, which is very sweet, and I liked it. But it is the most random plot point, and so unnecessary. There could have been a thousand things that brought them all back together. Like, they all just decided to go to the talent show to see who wins instead of them, because they're not going to be in it. And then they, like, reunite. She says sorry. Like, come on, it doesn't have to be Toto fell in a hole. My god. <laughs> the guy playing Jackal played the corporate guy in Quince, which makes me laugh so much because I know him as the voice of Darian in the original English dub of Sailor Moon. Derek, I hate the kid who plays Derek. I hated him when I was younger. I was like, what? I don't get it. He's mean. Like, how does she, like, kiss him at the end? Like, he's mean the whole time, whatever. Watching as an adult, totally misread him. He's actually very lovely. <laughs> and they just painted him. Like, they kept reacting to him like he was mean. But he was, like, really nice to them the whole time. So I don't know. Like, he was just being, like, friendly competition. But he's genuinely nice to Galleria and her friends the entire movie. So we stand. Um, <laughs> we love Derek now. And then Adrian, listen, I don't want to like put the other sisters down here, but Adrian shines in this movie. Multiple scenes where she's given such a phenomenal performance. She's crying with Dorinda. She's crying with her mom, screaming. Like, she really kind of, she really was kind of the one that was. And also, mm, I love, I love all their voices. Adrian might have the best voice. My hot take. The Foley, which for those who don't know, Foley is, um, there's a person in a recording booth with a bunch of different objects that records the sound effects for everything an actor or character touches or interacts with. So like background noise, like birds chirpings, um, storms, outside noises, like a city sound, anything like that is the sound designer. Uh, Anything an actor touches, picking up a phone off the desk, footsteps are, is the biggest one. Um, kissing is another big one. Punching, like anything like that is done by someone called a Foley artist. Um, so the footsteps, when Adrian, well Chanel, first comes home, like in the first shot of her entering her house, uh, the footsteps Foley are atrocious, so bad. <laughs> Um, and then I have a super hot take that no one's gonna like. The choreography in this is kind of bad. 
The last song, maybe not so much, except the push room sequence in the last song is a little questionable. But my biggest hot take is like any scene where Dorinda's at the dance studio dancing and they're like, wow, Dorinda's such a good dancer. <laughs> um, all the other dancers are doing the most and like Dorinda can just do like a no-handed car wheel. Like that's like, that's what convinced us as children that she was like an incredible dancer because she could do a no-handed car wheel <laughs> um, when she's not that good. Also, they make her wear a white tank top under literally every one of her outfits because her stomach could never show if her low rise pants and kind of cropped shirt come up a little too far. So she had to wear that white tank top underneath everything. They really had us out here thinking Raven Simone was fat in this movie. They really had us as children thinking Raven Simone was fat. The early 2000s was a rough time for female body image, guys. Still not the best, definitely better. Aqua's Purse Hot Sauce is the realest thing in the entire world. That's incredible. We stan. Uh, Jackal checking his watch during girl power is a felony and he should go to prison. Um, I think the reason I wasn't like as into this as like, I don't know. What were other D concerts like Halloween Town or High School Musical or Double Teamed or whatever else was because Galleria's behavior embarrassed me. Like I loved Raven, but watching Galleria be like that, like I get really bad at secondhand embarrassment. You guys know this at this point. It embarrassed me watching her be like that. So it was hard for me to watch sometimes. I definitely watched two more, I think, even though I know she's like that in two as well, but I'll have to watch, once I get to two, I'll have to let you know if I think it's better or not. When Galleria had <laughs> her whole butt handed to her, um, she needed that humbling. I did not feel bad for her in the slightest. And then the thing that has always stuck with me, <laughs> that has always bothered me, is at the end when Galleria starts singing, there's a time when we all choose um, they all like, you know, they're all walking away and they all stop and like turn around and look at her. Aqua? <laughs> Every time hers is like, she's like sleeping. She's like, she's like, like, she's like blink, she's like, like her eyes are half open. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, why, are you, why are you sleepy? Why are you trying to be like sultry? I don't know what that was. And it has always stuck with me. Like the second that was coming up, I was like, oh, and Aqua looks like she's asleep. <laughs> and then she turned around and she looks like she's asleep. Um, and I absolutely forgot that Derek and Galleria kissed at the end. 100% totally forgot that was a thing. Have no idea if it's continued into the second one. I have like barely any memories of the second one other than like they're trying to sing in some thing in Spain. And then they do like strut around that bench that I've been to. So like, that's all I remember. Um, overall, I love this. It's such a bop. It's so fun, a really good story. Um, I love the bond. I like that it's, you know, a girl, a girl movie. Um, girl movie in that it stars mostly women. There's like three dudes that are by name maybe, or not, well, Jack, okay, it's four dudes by name maybe in this movie. Um, but it's mostly about like young women passionate about their craft. Like I love that so much. Um, and it definitely set the precedent for decom musicals because after this we get like Pixel Perfect, which isn't that good, but we get High School Musical and Teen Beach Movie and Descendants and Zombies and like the decom musical has come far and wide. So yes. That's everything I have for the Cheetah Girls because we are sisters. We stand together. We make up one big family. Though we don't look the same, our spots are different. Different colors. Uh, okay, so my final rating is seven spots out of 10. Our total movie count is. Parent death and cry count are still the same. If you're about to come for me for Dorinda, she says her parents didn't want her. She does not say they died. And they do not mention Chanel's dad at all. So that's that on that. If you want to keep up with the movie watching, then follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You'll find out what movie watching when. It is celebration month, so don't forget that on Patreon, the deal is every tier is getting a benefit from the tier above it. So for just $1 for the month, 
you could have access to daily trivia questions this month and really participate and have so much fun. Otherwise, all the other tiers, go take a look at them. There's five, 10, 20, and $40 tiers that have lots of fun benefits. So go check them out. Um, and then merch, buy merch, merch with code PET600 is 25% off this month all the way until the 31st. So go buy some merch. This is definitely my favorite. I can't not love the castle. The castle is my favorite by far and away. Um, I really do love, uh, don't be a blank about it though. <laughs> That's also good. Uh, so go buy merch, 25% off with code PET600. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and I'm in charge of your life. You are, so you do, and don't be... Jackal about it.